In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the application Grapher in order to uh, help you visualize and explore problems in calculus and geometry. So this program comes built in with every Mac. On the other hand, I'm not totally sure what the Windows equivalent would be. Okay, so let's start by opening up uh, Grapher. And so we're given these options of a 2D graph or a 3D graph as well as these various uh, different options for coordinate systems. Today we're going to start with a 2D example uh, and then do a 3D example and you can explore all of these other things on your own time. Okay, so just give me a second to uh, resize this. Okay, there we go. So we're presented with this text box, this y equals, and I can type various things in here and see them graphed. Um, so I could do this linear function, maybe a more complicated polynomial. It'll also understand things like uh, y equals log of x. Or I could do uh, something a little bit weirder, uh, like this combination of these trig functions. And then I can uh, move around on this graph. I can zoom in and out. and then I can come back to where I started. What I want to do today to show off the program to you guys is explore the ideas of tangent lines and tangent planes, so you know, they're just tangent spaces, uh, that comes up in calculus and in geometry. So if you don't know or don't remember that much calculus, try to just take those parts on faith uh, and just focus on learning how to use the program. So the function that I'd like to use today to explore is going to be y equals e to the sine of x. Uh, and here's what that looks like. So the first thing that I would like to do is draw a point somewhere on this curve. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to add a new equation. And then I'm going to go into here, this little box, and select this 2D vector option. I'm not sure if there's a way to enter that directly. Usually I just copy and paste it over and over. So we're going to draw the point with x-coordinate 2, which means the y-coordinate is e of sine of 2. And so now that is uh, drawn this point on the curve for us. Well, okay, but now we're repeating ourselves a little bit. We've written out this e to the sine of something twice. Once we've got lots of equations, it's going to be annoying to uh, keep rewriting this. So to avoid this, um, Grapher lets us define a function. So we're going to define f of t equals e to the sine of t. And now notice it's got an equals sign on the left rather than this checkbox. And now I can just write f of x um, uh, and here f of 2 rather than rewriting that thing out. Now notice here that uh, in this definition I've written f of t equals e to the sine of t. I haven't used the x variable. Sometimes graph rule will get a little bit confused if you use the variable x. It's kind of a special variable. Um, so we're just doing this to be safe. Um, okay, uh, and now let's do the same thing to this, uh, the point that we chose, this 2. So now I'll write x equals p uh, and y equals f of p. Okay. Now that we've done that, it's going to be really easy for us to switch out uh, this function for something else, like cos t, or to switch uh, the point around. I can move this around and it'll still you know, graph the corresponding point on the curve. For now, let's switch it back to uh, what we had in the first place. Oops. Okay, there we go. Now, I said I wanted to explore tangent lines uh, in this video. So, in order to do that, I'm going to need the derivative of this function. So, I'm going to create a new function. Let's call it uh, g of t for the derivative of this function. So the derivative of that is cos t e to the sine of t. All right, let's move that up there. Now the equation of the tangent line is going to be uh, y minus f of p equals g of p uh, x minus p. And now you can see how much easier it is to just write out with these functions rather than retyping all of these exponentials and cosines and things. Okay, uh, and so now we get this nice tangent line graphed for us. Now I'm going to show you guys how to add some color to the graph, both to make it look nicer and to help you keep track of the different uh, parts of it that are going on. 
So to do that, I'm going to first select one of these curves, then click on Inspector here, uh, and then here I can go in and change the color. So let's make it a nice purple. Um, I'm also going to make this line a bit thicker just to make sure it turns out right in the video. Okay. Um, so that's a nice purple now. Let's leave this point as it is. That's fine. Uh, and then let's make the tangent line a nice green shade. Uh, and we'll make that a little bit thicker as well. Okay, so now this looks a little bit prettier, and it's easier to uh, distinguish between like the tangent line and the graph when they're uh, intersecting or close to each other. Now I'm going to show you guys my favorite feature, which is animation. So to create an animation, I'm first going to select a numeric parameter, in this case this p equals 2, and then go into Equation and click on Animate Parameter. And there's also this keyboard shortcut for doing that. Okay, so once I've done that, it uh, changes P so that now I've got this uh, slider that I can use to adjust the value of it just by dragging it around. Well, that's okay, but what I'm really interested in is just having it move on its own. Okay, so first let me adjust the parameters for this. So let's have it go from uh, minus 7.5 to 7.5. This steps thing you want to set to something fairly high so that the animation will run smoothly. Let's say 60. I don't really know what this continuous range box is, but I always check it just to be safe. Uh, and then let's set this animation speed to about here. Okay. Now once I've done that, I can just press play, and it'll move uh, P through those values automatically. It's often a little bit sluggish the first time running the animation, as you can see, uh, but once we let it go through once, it'll pick up speed. Okay, so there we go. All right, so now we can see really visually like what this tangent line means. It is just exactly pointing in the direction you're moving as you travel along the curve. Uh, doesn't it look like it's having fun? It's mesmerizing. Well, we don't want to watch this all day, as much fun as that would be, so let's put a stop to that. Okay, uh, so now it's time for our 3D example. So to switch to 3D, we're going to go into View. Let's click on Switch to 3D View. Okay, so now we get this uh, different kind of view box here. We can see that it's already tried to interpret our equations in 3D, and actually succeeds uh, except for this you know, vector here that is explicitly 2D. We'd like to start with a, a, from a clean slate, so let's just delete all of those guys. What I'd like to explore in this 3D example is tangent planes to a sphere. So let's start by drawing a sphere. In order to do that, I can simply type r equals 1, and it'll draw this nice sphere for us. So Grapher supports uh, many coordinate systems. In this case, what we're seeing is its use of a spherical coordinate system. Okay. So next, I'm going to want to draw points on the sphere. So I'm going to create this function, fab, and here I'm going to use this 3D vector option. And I'm going to have this spit out the point with x-coordinate A, y-coordinate B, and then the z-coordinate has to be uh, this, this expression. And it can take either the plus or the minus square root. I want the to look at points above the equator, uh, so I'm going to leave this uh, as a positive square root rather than putting a minus sign here. Move that up there. And now that I've done that, um, I can type in, for example, f0,0. This is the North Pole. Um, or something like, uh, say, 0.4 and 0.7. This is now a point over here. Now, before we get into this tangent plane stuff, uh, I'd just like to get this point to move around in the shape of an ellipse on the surface of the sphere. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a new parameter, u, which eventually I'm going to animate. Then I'm going to create uh, two further parameters uh, for the x and y inputs into the function f. So p is 0 0.4 cos of, let's say, v. And right now I'm going to have these guys depend on a parameter v instead of just hard coding u. And the reason for that will become apparent uh, shortly. Okay, um, and so now I put those into f. This will be p of u, q of u and uh, yeah, move all our definitions up top, as before. 
Uh, and then finally we are going to animate the parameter u. So this is an angle, so it just has to go from 0 to 2 pi. Um, everything else looks dandy. Okay. Now we click play, and we can see it moving around on the surface of the sphere in what looks like an elliptical shape. Now as a visual aid, let's plot out the entire trajectory that this point is going to be taking. We'll create a new equation, f of p of, uh, let's say, p of t, and then q of t, and t goes from uh, 0 to 2 pi. Okay, and now we can see this trajectory uh, that this thing is taking. So there's two things to point out here. Uh, one is this new uh, syntax we haven't seen before, or I it's called a parametric equation, where I can introduce a variable inside this equation and then you know, set the range for it. Um, so now if I set this to pi, it would only draw you know, half, of, uh, half of that trajectory. Uh, the other thing here uh, we now see is plugging in this t instead of u. That is why I had uh, done this v here in P, the definition of p and q, rather than hard coding in u. Um, so if I change this v to u, then the point would still be moving around. That part would still be fine, uh, but this, this display of the trajectory would have been broken. Okay, so that's, uh, that's why I did that. All right, now this animation looks nice, um, but it's a little bit hard to see the blue trajectory against the checkerboard uh, green pattern. Uh, so just as we did in the 2D case, we can adjust these colors uh, to make it nicer to look at and sort of easier to distinguish the different parts. So let's use this purple color again, and we'll make this trajectory part uh, bright pink. There we go. Okay, and now it's a little bit uh, easier to distinguish. Okay, uh, so now let's get to the uh, much vaunted, much promised tangent planes. Um, so uh, once again, we need derivatives. But now since we're working in uh, multiple variables, we actually need two separate derivatives, one for each variable. So I'm going to let g denote the partial with respect to a, uh, and that's going to be 1, 0, and then minus a over that whole expression. Then let's uh, copy this, and then h is going to be the partial with respect to b. That'll be 0, 1, and now just minus b over the same thing. We'll put those up there so all our definitions are in one place. Um, now to make the, the actual tangent plane to actually draw that, I'm going to use a parametric equation again. So it'll be f, p of u, q of u. Uh, but now I'm actually going to use two parameters. So one for the g direction or the partial with respect to a direction and another for the tangent direction in the direction of b. Um, and then let's make these go from uh, minus, whoops, um, minus 1 to 1, and the same for t. Okay, and now we see this uh, tangent plane to the sphere moving around um, as the point moves around. And we'll color this uh, green the same way we colored the tangent line. Alrighty, so now we've got this point moving around on the sphere. This tangent plane's coming along for the ride. It's done up in pretty colors. Looks like it's having a great time. It's like it's saying, uh, there's a party in my tangent bundle, and you're invited. So now to finish things up, let's draw the basis of this tangent plane that is given by these uh, tangent vectors at each point. So to do that, I'm going to use a parametric equation again. So copy this. And now just uh, for the tangent vector in the a direction, just chop off the part that was in the b direction. Now set this to 0 to 1. Um, and then for the b direction, do the same thing. Just chop off this s part and get t. So do that, and we'll get t to go from 0 to 1. All right, and then let's color this one red. Okay, so now the blue and the red arrow in that order are a basis of this tangent plane at any point on the sphere. Let me now comment on the mathematics of what we've done here. So we've used this function f to put coordinate, as a coordinate system, on the upper hemisphere of the sphere. Once we've done that, I can just uh, write things like parametric equations, as I might normally do in 2D, 
uh, using these coordinates, and then that'll get mapped onto the sphere. In terms of this tangent plane moving around, uh, fancy math way of saying that is what we're looking at here is the tangent bundle of the two sphere pulled back along a closed curve, which is this uh, pink curve we've drawn. And then the coordinates that we've chosen for the upper hemisphere induce a choice of coordinates on this tangent plane, which is this blue and red axes. And certainly when I was learning this kind of math, uh, these types of animations and visualizations helped me a lot to make sense of the fancy math. Alrighty, so that's Grapher. If you play around with this long enough, you'll discover that it does have some irritating bugs. Like if I uh, here change this to spit out the point in the bottom hemisphere, then it breaks all the nice colors that I had set up. So like I don't think Apple really maintains this program anymore. Uh, but if you're willing to tolerate a little bit of quirkiness, then for all the features this has that usually do work, uh, and for how easy it is to use, like you don't have to learn a programming language or anything, then I think this is a great tool. Um, so I encourage you to explore this more on your own and to use it when you're approaching these types of calculus and geometry problems.